So we've talked a little bit about the E2 reaction and talked about the stereochemistry of the E2 reaction and how that's important. And we're going to see how this is extremely important when it comes to talking about the E2 reaction when it comes to cyclohexanes. Because cyclohexanes undergo these interesting three-dimensional, have these interesting three-dimensional shapes to them called the chair form, which is going to lead to some complications when it comes to the E2. So here's kind of like the top top-down view of a cyclohexane, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So cyclohexyl chloride we've got here. And if we look at the, the three-dimensional view of a cyclohexane looks like, it kind of looks like this, right? We've got a cyclohexane chair form. And we've got the headrest, which is kind of up here. And we can think of the, t the, ch the footrest, which is there. And if we wanted to convert our cyclohexyl chloride to our chair form. Let's let's just draw out what that might look like. So let's start with the headrest, just put an axial group up, footrest, put an axial group down. So we're gonna alternate up and down, up, down, up, down like that. And maybe we'll use a different color for equatorial. So somewhat, if this is up, we make it somewhat down, somewhat up. So however you're gonna be alternating it, just to make it look nice and tetrahedral. Okay. And we can just arbitrarily number one of these carbons. Let's say this is carbon one. And since the numbering is going around here, counter or clockwise here, clockwise, so we will be going around clockwise as well. So this is carbon one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So that works. Um, so let's then think about where we could put our, on carbon number one, we've got our chlorine. So we'll make our chlorine, just arbitrarily, we'll make our chlorine axial. Um, so we're gonna see how we have chlorine being equatorial in the, other, in the other chair form. So all these other groups that I haven't drawn in, these are all hydrogen. So hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Okay, now we also have the chair flipped form, which is not as simple as just flipping it on its back. So remember in the chair flip, we're gonna have all of our equatorial groups are gonna become axial, and all of our axial groups are gonna become equatorial. So that is gonna mean that all of our axials are going to become equatorial. So let's draw in the axials first. Those are always the easiest to draw in. Head, foot, headrest, footrest, and then alternate up, down, down, up. And so you notice how the orange are equatorial here, and now they're axial. And we're going to make our former axials equatorial now, like that. Okay. And so the key thing here is that C1, the chlorine is axial. What's gonna have to happen here is the, C, is the chlorine is equatorial. So we're gonna have to renumber our C1. It's gonna have to be, um, we can make it here, here, or here. We're gonna make it, let's make it here. And we should probably keep the order in which we number our carbons here. So make it clockwise. And I'm gonna need some more room here. So flip that. Okay, so that's gonna put our chlorine, we said, here. So now our chlorines become equatorial. Okay, so chlorines become equatorial. Okay, so far, so good. Now, remember, what, what does this mean for the E2 reaction? Well, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, what's gonna be important about the E2 is that, remember, we need anti-periplanar, or sometimes you'll hear anti-coplanar uh, relationship of the Cl with the hydrogen that we're removing. Okay, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do Newman projections. Newman projections for, um, let's do C1 to C6. So let's take, remember, imagine that my eye, my eye here is it's kind of, actually move my all-seeing eye a little bit over. 
Okay, so imagine that my eye is here gazing lovingly at the C, C6 to C1 bond. So we're gonna look down C6 to C1. So maybe I'll change this here, C6 to C1. Okay, so what's it gonna look like? Well, we can draw it out like this. So let's draw our circle. We're actually gonna draw two circles. Okay, and what would we see? Well, we'd see the green hydrogen pointing down at six o'clock. We would see the orange hydrogen at about 10 o'clock, 12, eight. Sometimes it helps to think of it like a clock and we'd have a CH2, let's see, CH2 here, and that would do it for the front. And then for the back, we'd have a, another orange floating down there at about eight. We would have now our chlorine, which is pointing up like that. And then at four o'clock, we would have a CH2 kind of in the back here, CH2. That's carbon number two. That's carbon number two. And this is carbon number five up here. Okay. And then we'd actually, we can even look at this along the C4 to C3 bond as well. Uh, that would put this in the front and that in the back. And then we'd have another orange uh, more peachy, peach, and then we've got another hydrogen pointing straight down. Okay, so that's at six o'clock, and then we'd have another orange pointing down, and then we'd have finally another H pointing up. Okay, so all I really wanted to demonstrate with this is that here, if we look at the relationship between our chlorine and look at the relationship between this hydrogen here, these are, these are anti-periplanar because there's an angle of 180 degrees, which is ideal, you know, let's just write this out. So this is, um, this works for the E2. So the E2 here is possible. So if I was to take a base, let's say sodium hydroxide and treat it with uh, my cyclohexane here, I could take my base, it, it could abstract this hydrogen and we'd, we'd break the carbon six to carbon hydrogen bond, we'd form an alkene here and we'd lose our chlorine. So this works. Okay, let's have a look at the other type of situation. So let's draw out that Newman and Let's draw out another pair of circles here. And where's our eye gonna be? Um, so let's make our eye between, let's say carbon, carbon one, carbon six. So what are we gonna see if we look, oh sorry, carbon one, carbon two. So we're looking along uh, carbon one, carbon two. So Newman, Newman C1 to C2. Okay, so what would we see? Well, we'd see a hydrogen down at six o'clock. So all, I haven't drawn the hydrogens here, but you know they're there. So hydrogen there at six o'clock, and we draw in our chlorine, which would now be at about 10 o'clock. And then we'd have our carbon to C6 pointing at two o'clock. So this is C6 here. And um, that would do it for the front. Okay, maybe actually I should draw in the hydrogens just to be complete. Should be lazy, setting a bad example. So hydrogens go in here like that. Okay, good. So then what would we get? So in the back, we'd be looking at hydrogen and then we've got a green hydrogen here. And then we're gonna have a CH2 to C3. That's gonna be pointing in the back here, CH2. And that is C3. And then that's gonna be pointing up. That's gonna be pointing in front. So now we're looking along C5 to C4. So C5 is gonna have this hydrogen. And then we're gonna have, this hydrogen's gonna be at six o'clock. 
and then this hydrogen is going to be also at this is going to be at 12 o'clock and this is going to be at 4 o'clock okay so what do we notice now about our chlorine well notice how what is anti-periplanar to our chlorine well, let's look at our chlorine what's directly opposite it is is a carbon not a hydrogen a carbon so so Cl is anti-planar or periplanar to carbon, not hydrogen, not hydrogen. That's important. So in other words, we don't have a hydrogen which is at 180 degrees. This means that in this case, and actually I've kind of run out of room, haven't I? Um, no E2 is possible, exclamation point. No E2 is possible here, uh, as opposed to Cl, where Cl here was axial. And actually, if you work this out, you'll see that the E2 is only, only possible when the leaving group is axial. Bottom line, end of story. It's not possible when your leaving group is equatorial. This is, this for example is, this is equatorial, and we said this is axial. So extremely important to circle memorize, tattoo, what have you, that E2 is only possible when the leaving group is axial on a cyclohexane ring. Otherwise, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have a hydrogen which is anti-periplanar to it. So that's the take home message from this video. Make sure you're able to take a, a cyclic planar cyclohexane structure, draw it as the chair and know that when it's only when it's axial can we do an E2.